Hey, watch fans, Brad from Brent Miller Jewelers here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And I had someone reach out to me and say, hey, do you mind doing a video on the Omega 300M as he was comparing it to the Tag Aqua Racer 300 here as well. Both blue, both, uh, both uh, blue dials, blue ceramic bezels, obviously a little bit different execution. But I thought while I'm at it, why settle for just two? Let's let's throw whatever I have on stainless steel bracelets with some blue dive watches into this mix. So I got the Tudor Black Bay 58 as well right here, and I have the new Breitling Super Ocean. While not completely blue, it does have the blue bezel. So I'll primarily focus on these two since uh, that's what I'm trying to get accomplished, but I want to bring the other two into the mix as well. All um, dimensions on all of these will be listed in the um, in the description. So I'll link. I've done individual reviews on both of these, and uh, I will certainly put all the dimensions, everything I can. I'm going to turn my lighting here quick to see if that helps at all. And uh, again, I'll put all that in the uh, in the description for these. But really, just wanted to kind of put these side by side. You have a 42 millimeter Omega 300M and a 43 millimeter uh, Tag Heuer Aqua Racer. I mean, the first thing looking at these two is the blues are just different shades of blue. So depending on what you're looking for, in my opinion, in some very low light or dark situations, this blue almost can look black, specifically on the bezel. Um, it is pretty dark. I, again, I like it. It's just, um, you know, if you really want a, a, I guess you could say truer blue, uh, the Omega, I think is probably the way to go. Uh, you know, skeleton sword hands on your Omega. Um, obviously some people, some folks love that. Some, you know, it's not for them. So going to have better loom, I would think. And I will show loom on all of these, uh, towards the end of the video. But, uh, you know, just looking at the, the sword style hands here on the aqua racer, then your date window. I mean, you have a Cyclops. Do you like a Cyclops? Do you not like a Cyclops on the Omega? You have the helium escape valve. So just aesthetically looking at these things, as you start to look at them, you know, I think aesthetically, Obviously, I encourage everybody to try it on, put it on your wrist if you can. Um, but, you know, the size-wise, I, I think the, the tag obviously is larger. I think it's going to wear larger. I'll put these both on wrist here shortly. Both great watches. You know, you have your, your wave dial. You just have more of a, just straight horizontal lines on your tag. Listen to the bezel action on both. Pretty crisp bezel action. Again, I'm wearing gloves. I will say the tag's bezel is easier to uh, to grab and to, to turn. Uh, the scallop bezel on the, uh, the 300, uh, a little bit more difficult. Again, I am wearing gloves, but you can see kind of the smooth sides of that, of that bezel versus um, your uh your nostril kind of ridge bezel here on your on your tag so just some again differences you know when you get to movement again you have obvious differences there in the movement um in-house movement on the omega larger power reserve on the omega and i'll list all of that in the uh in the description as well exhibition case back so Again, hopefully just seeing those side by side gives you a quick comparison. But while I had it, let's take a look at the Super Ocean next to them as well. Uh, I am a fan of these new Breitling Super Oceans. They have grown on me since release. I wasn't initially, um, you know, blown away. But the more I hold these, the more I just, I really like what they did with them. Uh, loved the blued hands on, uh, on this specific model. The new bracelet I think is fantastic. The new clasps. I did not show you the class, just, just looking at the uh, the tag and the Omega. Um, the micro adjustments do have micro adjustment on the Aqua Racer 300. Um, buttons here, dual push buttons that allows you to slide. Sorry, that's not in focus. The Omega has, I think, probably a little bit simpler adjustability or easier instead of having the buttons they have to push. Used to have a button on the inside. We're pushing down, sliding out. So, again, pretty easy micro adjustability. The new Breitling, the clasp on this again. We're just going to push down on that and again, slides pretty easily. So, I would rank uh, as far as easily micro adjustability on the fly, the, the Breitling and Omega, uh, I think are probably the two easier ones. 
The bezel action on these new Breitlings too is fantastic. I I love it. I, I actually personally prefer the bezel action on this Breitling uh, over the tag and the Omega, just my personal opinion. And let's take a look at the Tudor. I got one here on stainless steel and black, uh, black P58. Again, this is more of a matte dial uh, or matte blue when you compare it to either of these two. You know, aluminum bezel. The rest of them all have ceramic bezels. The, the Tudor does have the aluminum bezel. And it's also the smallest, you know, 39 millimeters. If you have a smaller wrist or prefer a smaller watch, you're going to like the size of this better, I think. Um, you know, you may or may not prefer or like the rivet bracelet. Um, that's, again, completely um, kind of individual, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Some folks don't mind it. When you're looking straight down, you really don't see them. And bezel action. Tudor bezel actions is pretty good as well. I, I still, I, I don't know. I, I really like what Breitling did on the bezel on these new Super Oceans. So I'll throw these on wrist. I'm already running a lot longer than I wanted to on this video, so I do apologize. I got four watches here. Real quick, again, I have a six and three quarter inch wrist. The tag's definitely going to wear the largest, in my opinion. I'd say followed probably by the Omega coming uh, lug the lug on this, I believe, just under 50, right around 49, 49 and a half. And the new Super Ocean at 42 millimeters had as I, from off the top of my head, 46, 47 lug to lug, so a little shorter lug to lug. And I think it does wear um, a little bit smaller than the uh, 300M, than the Omega. Definitely a thinner uh, case profile than the uh, outgoing Super Ocean model. And then last, certainly not least, the 39 millimeter Tudor Black Bay 58. And the other thing I just noticed while putting this on is this is the only one with the uh, kind of what we call like the flip lock here uh, at the clasp. The rest of them are all um, twin trigger push button deployments. So real quick, I'll give you a loom shot on all of these. And this is definitely one of the longer videos I've done in a while. So if you're watching, thanks for sticking in and maybe you fast forwarded through some of it. But so on my left again is the tag on my right, the Breitling. On my left, the Tudor 58, and on my right, the Omega. So if I can get these. Thanks for watching. If there's anything I can do to help you out, email me, brad at brentlmiller.com. I'll see you in the next video.